Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And this is Boring Objects. On a Saturday? Yes, on a Saturday. Um, I didn't do it on a Monday like I would normally, but I will still also do another one on Monday. So I'm going to do a Saturday's Boring Objects because that's not re no reason really, to be honest. Although I do need some more subjects. So when I've done this, I will ask you to give me some ideas of what you'd like me to talk about if you can when I post this I don't know may I just ask I'll ask a question on, on the Facebook group so if 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 you'd like to participate in these podcasts videos whatever and please join my Facebook group which is Jason Newland's boring group and that way you can interact with me and the other listeners. Uh, also, I've got a website called jasonnewland.com and all of my recordings are on there. So you can not only stream the audio, stream the video, you can also download all of the recordings for free. And lastly... Now, every day, every time I make a new recording, I produce a video, a 10 hour long video, which is uh, with a black screen. So it's 10 seconds of an image, and then it goes to a black screen for the next 10 hours. And you can, you can catch that on the YouTube channel. There are four... Oh, about 2,000 videos on YouTube as well, like past videos. But uh, yeah, I try and make a new one every time. Um, so these recordings, I've started, <laughs> I like to give myself more work for some reason. Yesterday's recording, I did six versions. No, 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 not sure if I'm going to do six versions again, but I might well do. Uh, which is without music just for the length of the recording 5 hours without music 10 hours without music with music normal length recording 5 hours with music 10 hours with music so you know the music is provided by Kevin McLeod it is copyright free and let me have a look. I should then start trying to do this a bit more. Jason. Do, 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 do. On my website, there's actually a link to the background music. So, background music, copyright free details, deep relaxation, Kevin McLeod, in incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons, Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Creativecommons.org licenses forward slash licenses forward slash by forward slash 3.0. You can get that information from my website. It's also on the podcast and also on, no, it's not on the YouTube channel because I don't have music on the YouTube channel. Ah, let's get on with the recording. So I did ask, I did a I like a poll a few weeks ago asking which ones you found most interesting or which ones you'd like me to do a recording from. I think it's just cuddled up to me. So I've got the door closed, well, pretty much closed, but I've got the window open. Got to have one or the other because the air needs to circulate, otherwise it gets too stuffy in here. And so hopefully you won't be hearing anything that's happening within the building so much 
and because it's sort of semi-raining on and off, there possibly won't be too much going on outside either. Although I've just heard something in the hallway. Sounds like someone's banging against all the the staircase, so I don't know what that is. I've got my camera anyway, so that comes on if anyone... People don't knock at the door anymore, they press the buzzer on the camera. Got one of those uh, camera doorbells. Had it since... Hmm... December, I think. No, January. Had it since January. But I don't... I took it off for a while and I'll put it back on again. Because I had those toilet rolls got stolen. <laughs> the thing is, do anything. But the two things I will not put up with is someone not returning my umbrella and having my toilet roll stolen. That who'd, who'd have thought that was the line not to cross, eh? Who'd have thunk it? Every time, <laughs> don't steal my poo wipes. It's just, don't do it. I mean, it's important stuff. We need that. It's not, it's not, I don't buy it because it's fun. I don't, I don't, you know, it's not, it's not like a hobby. <laughs> it's not, anyway. So, Wellington Boots. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if I've even talked about Wellington Boots before. If I have, I'm going to do it again. And that will happen. Uh, I will occasionally, d you know, do the same stuff talk about the same thing uh, which is I guess I do anyway I talk about Philly a lot and I talk about I will be I'm guessing because of my my focus is starting to be given towards the degree course I'm doing that I will be starting to probably include some of that stuff that I am learning I learned something really interesting I've got to tell you sorry I found this very interesting did you know that children have rights did you know that they have rights like in law like it's an international law that a lot of countries abide by. America doesn't. For some reason, America doesn't recognise that law. But this country does. And I don't want to say too much because I know how people get angry about it. But the this... Because um, you know how legal, how law kind of... They always like quote a previous court case... So if there's a landmark court case and let's say the the person wins the case then it's almost it opens up for other people to also in, in a very very similar situation to also sue and win. Well this uh, a mother went to court to basically get the court to tell this is in this country my country the UK of England Commonwealth Britain used to say Europe but can't say that anymore because we're not in Europe anymore no so we used to yeah okay so she took her doctor to court a family doctor because the family doctor was seeing her 16 year old no, no I think she was even under 16 but seeing her child, daughter and giving her contraception without telling the parent just as I thought I was going to be able to have a peaceful recording Vinny starts barking I can't even I can't even explain 
the pleasure of doing a recording without him barking. Because the editing is easy. I mean, easy. Literally, yesterday's recording, all I had to do is find the beginning bit, you know, take off the bit, the beginning bit where I'm getting ready or whatever, phase in, go to the end, cut off that bit, phase out, you know, adjust the volume, just check through any spikes to see if anything needs to be done. You know, just to, because I can't always remember whether or not he's barked or if I've had to, you know, clap my hands, which is what I do when he's been barking, to be able to uh, mark it on the recording so I can see like, the big spike on the recording. And if he hasn't, like yesterday, he hadn't barked at all the whole time. He made a few sounds, which were cute. The recording was edited really quickly, really quickly. I still go through it a bit, you know, I still want to kind of see, make sure all the bits are okay, but it's a lot quicker. And the rest of the time is just taken with uploading, which is quite time consuming and, you know, making an image and whatever. But the editing part, which is the... The part I don't, I don't always look for. I don't always look forward to, to be honest. Especially if he's been barking a lot. But today, he just started, and he's really listening. He's almost. I've closed the window. Um, I told him to get out of the living room, but he wouldn't. So he stayed in there with me. But he's listening. His ears. All he's doing now. I can see it. He's listening for something to bark at. I've got my little dog whistle thing here. And the app on my phone. So I can press that. Which will. Hopefully stop him from barking. But. It's not even a case of the. He's going to stop eventually anyway. But it's, don't look at me like that. What's wrong with just having a little cuddle? The thing is, right, if I'm not making a recording and he starts barking, I let him have a little bark. Providing it's not early hours of the morning or late at night, I let him have a little bark. I don't let him carry on for ages, but let him have a little bark and then say, that's, that's enough now. If someone if someone knocks on a door, he barks, and that's normal. I don't don't give me any hassle for that. Just like yeah, cool, cool. good boy, because you are a good boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Your tail's going. Yeah, you're a good boy. So that's kind of what, that's his job, isn't it? He's he's here, he's protecting me, and he's you know he's lovely. So he does get an opportunity to bark. It's not like I'm kind of stopping him from being himself. It's just when I'm making a recording. And I could put him in the bedroom. And just leave him in there. Every time I did a recording. But I like him being here with me. I like him. To me. He is my co-presenter of this recording. He's doing it with me. He's part of this. Just like Andre used to be part of it. It's, yeah, it's, maybe it's a weird thing to say, but it's just it's how I feel. So and I like cuddling him when I'm doing the recording because it feels nice. I remember something my friend downstairs used to say to me. I said, oh, I need to go and I need to go upstairs. Yeah, and he said, if it was someone else in the flat with him and you know, they'd be, it used to get a little bit uh, uncomfortable at times. And I'd just say, oh, I'm going to go upstairs. And Luke would walk to the door, he said, oh, you want to go and, you want to go and give uh, Andre a cuddle? Because you're stressed. And I said, yeah. He, he, I didn't even tell him that, but he, figured, he sussed it out. That Andre was my kind of stress reliever. 
See, I'd come up here, I'd give him a big cuddle, and I'd de-stress, you know, I'd feel, I'd feel better. I'd be away from, it might just be like a bit of verbal hostility going on, or a lot of negativity, like a lot of that used to go on. And I would just remove myself from the situation and cuddle my little boy and I felt better. And it's a kind of a similar thing here, I guess. I'm cuddling my little boy, cuddling Vinny. He's cuddling me. And once he's in this mode, he doesn't seem to care about anything else because there is sounds going on downstairs and he loves he loves the girl downstairs who lives there absolutely he adores her honestly and he if he hears it he barks when he hears her coming and she shouts hello to him and he tries to get into a flat every opportunity he can He's all sniffing at the door, cause he's sniffing her pussy, cause she's got a, a ginger cat, ginger pussy cat, and it's um, she's his name's Arthur, and she he, he I don't know what he wants to do with her pussy. I don't know if he wants to play with it or if he wants to eat it or he wants to. I don't know, cause he's. He barks, but is he being aggressive? Does he want to attack the cat, or does he want to? Does he want to um, just run around like he does with dogs and just play with it like the way he does with little dogs? I don't know. I sometimes think he thinks he is a pussy cat because he's so little himself, isn't he? So yeah, I don't know. Although. Uh, a neighbour's pussy absolutely petrifies him. He went round there, and the problem is, this is like a few months ago, in during the summer. <laughs> summer was a long time ago now. Now during the summer, um, he went round there when we was in the garden, and he just wandered off. Now they, they've got a pussy cat, but she was pregnant. And he went a bit too close, and I think she might have swiped him. Whatever she did, there was no physical injuries to him, but he was very upset, and he was hiding underneath a tree, shivering and scared. So I had to like coax him out and pick him up, and I don't know really what happened, but they had a little punch up, and the cat won. Ever since then, the cat has bullied him. Like, honestly, the cat comes... I went in there the other day. Cat was on the roof. No reason to come down. But when, as, soon as, as soon as she saw him, as soon as the pussy saw him, it came down and started tormenting him. Like, really, just trying to push him around and, like, hissing at him. And he just... He, he got so scared absolutely scared and he was he made sounds I've never heard him made before and I picked him up to like try and console him in that and I, I thought well I'll take him to the bottom of the garden just to get him away just to give him a little bit of space and he didn't and he was making the weirdest sounds he didn't want me holding him he, he wanted to go back but he didn't want to be there it's very strange and I went there recently and he wouldn't even walk up the driveway. He refused to walk up the driveway because he's so... I think the cat is his enemy. Like, he likes pussies, but I think that particular pussy is not his cup of tea, as it were. So, yeah... It's weird. Maybe the reason he wants to like the one downstairs because she's a ginger pussy, and he's ginger, isn't he? Is he like he's red, red. He's gingery, isn't he? Redhead, 
little uh, Jack Russell. Yeah, I just realised that it won't be long before I start hearing the train. There's this, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, it's like a farm shop thing with a restaurant and they have this train that goes around. They have it during the summer, but they have it especially at winter. Like the, the weekends leading up to Christmas and especially during the Christmas holidays why anyone would want to be going on a really slow train in, in the cold I don't know although I did a train like that journey and it went up Mount not Everest what's the one in Wales Mount Snowdonia we went up there at least twice, once by train, and then once we walked. It's pretty much a path. We might have done it three times and went up in like a, the more rugged way, but I think it was, yeah, I think we went up. We might have walked up it twice and went up by train once because Wales was kind of the holiday destination when I was a kid. We used to go there and go camping and it's, beautiful place the places we went to was a uh, lovely really lovely and we the beaches were amazing and yeah it was just really cool the whole thing the i mean the the area and that so what was i gonna do yeah so <sighs> Wellington boots. That's what I was going to talk about. This is this, this is the boring objects. I forgot I was had a reason for doing this. There's music downstairs now, and it's a little bit distracting. Just a little bit, probably because I'm thinking he's going to start, and I don't want him to start, and hopefully he won't start, and he'll be quiet just for a little while. And today, boxing, boxing, boxing. Because it's now 17 past 12 in the afternoon. And I think the boxing starts 3 or 4 o'clock. I'm not sure exactly. I need to check. So that will be an interesting afternoon and evening. And uh, what I will probably do... If I stop yawning, is once I've uh, recorded this, I might just edit it and do what I did yesterday, just upload everything, and then it'll be done, 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 and then tomorrow is Sunday papers. Yeah, so this is officially Monday's boring objects, but on a Saturday. So Wellington Boots, did I talk about Wellington Boots? Uh, I don't know, because I, I, I do talk about the same subject sometimes, and I'm just thinking, even with the questions, the Q&A Friday, I might have the same question, but I'll answer it differently. So even if I did... A boring objects on as for example say for example brrr, hair which I think I have in the past it's going to be a different a different recording each time I'm just trying to think if there's anything a bit more interesting than Wellington Boots I know it's supposed to be boring but I find something that interests me usually bores other people that's what I find. Oh yeah, this woman. So the woman, she went to court and got found a gangster. So the law, I think it was 1989, an international law, said that uh, the doctor does not have to contact the parent. 
about things like that. Uh, I'm not sure what the age limit is on that. It might be because the age limit for doing whoopee in this country is 16. So maybe, I don't know if it's younger than that for contraception. I don't know. But anyway, I don't know the full story. But yeah, it must be weird to have kids and for to know doctors can prescribe you know, it's weird. I don't think I even went into the doctors without my stepmom. I think she came into the doctors with me until I was about 15. Is that normal? I don't know. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she did. I don't know. I don't think I ever went into the doctors without her. I'll tell you why, because I remember the last time I went to the doctors was because I was having headaches. No, I was having headaches and then I was having, I had problems with my feet. Yeah, so I had, I was having headaches and eye strain and that's what the doctor said. So she was with me and I was, I was 15. So she came into the doctors with me. And I had to, I got sent to the opticians and uh, the reason I was getting headaches is because I needed glasses. So yeah, she came to the, yeah, she came with me. So I was 15. And the other thing, the, my toes were hurting and they said, well, it's because of the karate. I said, mm -hmm. what do you mean because of the karate? She said, you're using your toes, you're doing unnatural acts with your toes I said no I'm really not and she said he said no no but it's it's not normal most people don't spend so much time on their toes and she basically said the doctor said you've got a thing called ballerina toes I said eh? no I don't do ballerina and she says she said no it's basically it's what ballerinas get because they spend so much time on their toes it's unnatural to be standing like that and because you're you're doing that you're spending a lot of time moving around I mean I wasn't balancing on my toes like a ballet person but I was you you know it was a lot of bouncing around and kicking and stuff so yeah so there's there's nothing you can do other than stop doing karate So I thought, oh, okay, never mind. So, I mean, a lot of it, it might have been growing pains because I was still growing at that point and maybe I was overusing. No, because if I was, not every part of me that was being used a lot was aching. So, yeah, I guess, I don't know, my toes, I don't know, it's weird. I mean, they probably were getting bashed quite a bit, you know, but people doing the sparring and getting blocked and... Uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know. But the point is, my stepmom was in, in there with me. She was the doctor. No, she wasn't. She was in there with me. So... Maybe that's not the way things are now. Maybe that's not the way things were then. Maybe it was weird. <laughs> I mean, I, luckily, I never had to have any... I don't think I went to a doctor for anything particularly sensitive when I was a kid. Um, hmm. Now, there was one thing, but I was early teens, maybe 12, 13, 12, 11, 10, 11, 12... I'm not sure if I went to the doctor for that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that because that's... That's a little bit embarrassing, really. Okay, here's what I used to do. No, I don't. No, I'm not going to tell you. No. I want to tell you, but it doesn't really fit in with the... Therapeutic... <laughs> yeah. 
the, 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 the healing part of the recording. I don't know. It's just a silly thing that I used to do when I was young and I kind of caused myself a bit of problems. It's got an infection, that's all. Now you, you really want to know now, don't you? I know you do. I'm not going to tell you. Um, nothing... Okay, it's probably a bit weird, but nothing like weird, weird, just a bit. Uh. Anyway, so yeah, um, Wellington boots. I haven't worn Wellington boots since I was probably the last time would have been. Oh yeah. The last time I wore Wellington boots was the 90s. Just remembered. The 90s. Now, I grew up in the 70s and Wellington boots were the norm. I mean, we'd, we'd wear them in bed. You know, it's just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere you went. You go to, if you, if you get any photographs... Uh, from the seventies of weddings, you see them all wearing Wellington boots. You know, wedding dress, Wellington boots. It's just, it's a complete lie. But they were popular, and a lot of people were wearing them. And they weren't even really. I mean, I've never been particularly fashion conscious myself, anyway. But they weren't like the opposite to fashionable I'm not sure they were ever being fashionable fashionable but they were useful it was one of those things that they were useful I mean there's nothing fashionable about um try to think like a stapler but it's useful isn't it sellotape is useful it's not fashionable an umbrella it's not fashionable but it's useful. At least it used to be when I had one. Toilet paper. See, I can't. Once I think about one, I have to think about the other. It's not fashionable, but it's useful. Very useful. So, Wellington boots were something that everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people seemed to use. Especially in the winter. Or when it was raining. And also in the garden. And, you know, just those kind of situations. And I don't remember ever wearing Wellington boots until I moved in with my my, my dad and my stepmom. My first stepmom. I don't recall ever wearing Wellington boots before then. I might have done, I just don't remember. But we definitely did then. It was a family tradition, I think. We all had Wellington boots. And I'm just trying to think of the ones I had. I'm sure I had a pair of red ones, which is, isn't that what Paddington has? Does Paddington Bear have red ones or yellow ones? Ah. Now, they were good for, I mean, they're good for keeping your feet dry. I mean, that's a useful thing. It's, and they say, I don't think there's anything fashionable about having wet feet, personally. What's the point of looking good if you, if you like, ugh, you know? It's, 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 comfort is definitely worth something I prefer comfort over I don't know I would quite like I'd love to have been fashionable I just never really had any interest in fashion and I still don't I mean there have been occasions when I've become smart when I've like I dressed smartly there's been a few times in my life when I have and when I do it I do feel better I do 
I feel probably more confident maybe I feel yeah it's, it just feels nicer to be dressed nice I mean nowadays I wear the same things all the time I go about eight pairs of tracksuit bottoms blue dark blue and I've got t-shirts and tops and they're just all the same stuff really still haven't worn any socks since I think January but I'm gonna I'm, I may start to look at getting to, to wearing some socks because I've actually I've got some boots really good boots they're not Wellington boots they're more like hiking boots but I got them a few years ago probably I'm probably had them about four years but they're really good they're the kind of boots that if you look after them they possibly will last for a long long time and because I've hardly worn them at all they're not even scuffed they're not dirty they're nothing I've just worn them a handful of times and I've never I did actually no that's, that's not totally true I was wearing them I only really started wearing them properly when I got this little one here and I'm pointing to Vinny by the way don't be rude I I took him into the fields and it was a you know it was snowing so I got him on the Saturday and I'm pretty sure it started snowing like on the Sunday And then by the Wednesday, all the snow had gone. Wednesday or Thursday. And that's when I went, fell, <laughs> fell down the stairs. So slipped. But I, I took him out in the snow. And I was wearing the boots in the snow. And they were perfect for that. They, they were crunching right into the ice. They weren't... I'm not saying that there was no slip. Because ice is ice, isn't it? And they didn't have uh, nails in the bottom of them or anything like that. But they did, they're quite a good grip. And they are more for mountaineering or, I don't know, maybe more hill climbing than mountaineering maybe. But they are a good, really sturdy. And they, they haven't got steel toe caps, but it feels like they have got steel toe caps. It's like really solid toe caps. So I could, I could kick a wall and not hurt myself. Why would I want to kick a wall? I don't know. I'm just saying, as an example, I could kick a wall and not hurt myself. I might hurt my knee, though, because of the shock of it. I don't know. I've never kicked... I mean, I, last time I kicked a wall, I was in bed. Did I tell you I kicked a wall twice? Both times I was asleep, and it's all happened since January... The first time I broke my toe, really, oh man, that's why I have to stop wearing socks because I couldn't get them on. And that took quite a while to heal. And then I did it again. But luckily, the second time, I think I might have had the duvet on top to kind of protect my foot. So all it was was just a ow, woke up oh no, not done it again, and just thinking, okay, but the the initial, like, pain just subsided, and I thought, oh, and it was a little bit bruised, but that was it, it wasn't really a big issue, the, the one in January, wow, wow, I haven't seen colours like that for a long time, it was a mess, so, that's enough about my portrait picture. I, oh, I've not got the DNA test back yet, but I'm looking forward to that. You know, I've got a friend who said that she didn't get a DNA test done for herself. She just got both her parents done. And then she said she didn't need to do one herself. Because the DNA was 
because we're 50% DNA from both the parent and the mother, mother and the father, aren't we? So she said, well, I know what I am. But you still don't know what predominantly you are, though, do you? What genes have been the predominant thing? And I said, well, she said, well, I know what I am, just generally. I said, yeah, but what What? What if your mum, what if you got, you know, a different dad and you didn't realise? Probably not the best thing to say, considering her mum was in the back of the car, listening on loudspeaker. But I just... So I just think it's it's that whole thing. Like if you're going to do something, do it properly. If you're going to do a DNA test, yeah, you do it on both your parents. I can understand like the concept of you just look at theirs and you can get your own. But no, do your own. Find out what kind of percentage. Because I think her dad was a Greek or something a high percentage of Greek which they didn't know and but she might be more percentage of her mum who was um, Chinese or something so she might uh, be sort of more that way so I don't know it'd be interesting for her <laughs> not for me for her be I think it would be interesting but see I don't have that luxury I can't first of all my dad wouldn't do it anyway and I don't have uh, the other one to ask so it's one of those kind of just got to do it myself so it'd be I'm just I'm thinking it's quite be it'd be interesting I, I was also thinking it'd be nice to do some kind of other tests and um, maybe IQ tests I guess I can do that online anyway and just go through it but I don't know I think IQ tests is, it seems to be so much based on mathematical ability along the way and my mathematical knowledge is at this point not possibly at the same level as another person of a similar age as myself. I just, I would say I'm probably mathematical age would be about 10 years old. Seriously, my mathematical ability. I can do basic stuff. Um, you know basic fractions I can do I can work out the times table the ten times table I mean you know once you go higher this you know so I can do I can work out any any times like six times nine four times three whatever like that I can do it some are easier than others. In a way, nine is quite easy, even though it's, it's, you'd think that'd be the hardest one, because all you do is just take one off, don't you? So eight times nine, well, it's eighty. Take off nine, so seventy-one. Um, so it's it's kind of yeah, that is easy. But when it comes to fractions. I understand the basic fractions and percentages. Just the basics. But long division and um, algebra and so on and so forth. You know, just... Uh, and it's not like it's ever really being required either. I mean, there's some things that I've learned because I've needed to learn. And one of the things was conversions. So when I was doing sales, I had to convert, get the conversion of how many 
uh, calls to how many sales and then how many how many quotes to how many sales so I could give it my percentage my conversion conversion my sales conversion or my call to quote you know things like that so I kind of learned my way around that by doing it like every day but I did yeah so to have that as part of the IQ test because for me the IQ test as my understanding is it's not about memory it's not about what you know it's about how your brain works it's about if your brain is I guess to me it would be your brain's ability to learn to learn new ways of doing things and when I did do the last time I did an IQ test I think I came up just above average you know pretty much average just slightly slightly marginally above but let's say average and that wouldn't be ideal for a lot of people I know I I think I'm just guessing but I'm pretty sure a lot of people would not be happy with average but me for most of my life personally uh, my belief he's sighing why are you sighing my belief was that I was very very below very very low intelligence based on what I was told based on my academic non-prowess during my school years based upon being taken out of my maths class and put into a special needs class it would be classed as now back then it was just classed as the dunces class so I was taken out of my I was it's weird because I was average I was just in the kind of average kind of classroom so I was put in all the other classes you know English history uh, religious education uh, geography science uh, metal work you know whatever all the, all the different um, classes I did including maths was all kind of average I wasn't in the lowest class because they had a thing called Osprey so O was a top Y was the bottom and I was R so I was just P and R were kind of both equalish O was top S was second top P I guess P was above R but they were kind of kind of evenish you know or R was just below P but it's in the alphabet but then you've got E and Y E and Y were the lowest Y was the lowest according to the teachers that's what they said so uh, this is not my idea this is what we were told not a good system I'll be honest I don't think so all the really clever kids when it, I mean well actually it's not true at all because you know supposedly all the intelligent kids were in O so they'd be in that class so there was O S P R E Y six different classes in my year and they'd all be treated differently now I was in what happened I think is the people that were in the middle it's almost like the teachers were uncertain at that point we'd started high school 
they didn't know. It's like they weren't sure. Or maybe we weren't all at the top of every lesson or every subject. So they put people in the middle. And then after that, they started uh, moving people. So I had the a few of the kids that were in the first year with me moved up to O because they were to be fair there was two very intelligent like intellectuals and I got on really well with them yeah I got on really well with them blimey wow so one was he God, I forgot I used to play with them outside of school I forgot all about this so there was these two they were intelligent I mean proper I don't know how to explain it, but they were very uh, clever, really clever kids. And I used to hang out with them outside of school, and we had a little detective agency. Now, this sounds like I'm making it up now, but it's true. We, we didn't really do anything, but it was a detective agency. And one of my friends, we used to go around his house... And the other one, he used to come round as well, and we used to go around and we'd have these guns. They weren't real guns, and we'd go around shooting each other and stuff, and running around the streets. And it was it was a lot of fun. And he moved away. He, his whole family were mus- musicians, and I think he played the violin. But in the house, it was a big, big old house, similar to the one I was living in, actually. And it was only round the corner from where I lived. And he had this... Uh, the whole front room was just violins and cellos and a piano. And I don't know if his parents were music teachers or musicians. I can't remember. But the whole family was musical. And... I remember the going in there and talking to my friend and at one point I'm say say to his mum can you stop playing that thing please stop put the piano down please will you just stop I'm trying to talk to your son here apparently that was rude I shouldn't have said that the thing is he literally was holding the piano up with one hand she was very strong don't mess with someone that can hold a piano up with one hand that was something I learned so she chucked the piano at me it's only then that I realised that uh, I thought it was like a really, really big room. But it wasn't. It was a really small room and the piano was really tiny. I was My spatial awareness was a bit off back then. Anyway, uh, we went upstairs. I don't know if, it's, if my... I think there's only one person. There's only me and the person who who lived in that house were there on this occasion and we went upstairs he said I've got some bad news for you I said what they're not taking Doctor Who off the air are they he said no no I don't don't know about that I said said, what about the A team I said no he said why would they take the A A team off I said I don't know I think BA I think he's going to suss out eventually that they keep drugging him to get him onto planes. And if he stops that, he won't be able to get on a plane. They won't be able to go to where they need to do have the adventure and the whole show will go to pot. And he said, no, 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 that's not the reason. And he said, it's about the detective agency. I said, okay. And he had an office. Literally, his bedroom was an office. He had all this as a desk... Hey, honestly, it was brilliant. It was so good. And he said, I'm moving. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm moving. I said, well, what about your parents? He said, no, they're coming with me. They're, they're the ones, and I'm going with them. I said, why? He said, I've got no choice. It's, uh, I think he's, I don't remember why. It might have been... 
I think it's either his dad had to move because of the job he had or his mum wanted him away from me. I'm not sure which one it was. But, yeah, I was so sad because he was a friend and for some reason they accepted me, him and the other bloke, the other kid, they accepted me even though I wasn't on their level of intelligence. Because the people I normally would get on with was the, you could say the ruffians. But I was able to get on with both sides. So there's those, yeah, because basically with the mathematics class, I had a, a teacher called Mr. Johnson. And this is the first year of high school. And he was the only maths teacher I ever had that took notice and listened to me and tried to explain how to do it how to do the job and yeah it was he, he I think he was only there for the first term and then he he left he was ill or arrested I don't know I think he I think he was ill and he I used to see him in town sometimes and he had his big beard and big long hair and he was sitting there on the a bench in town kind of special brew and I just he was so lovely and because he was kind and gentle during a maths lesson, I mean, he, I kind of, I don't know, I, I became, I wasn't interested in maths, it still didn't make me interested in it, but it made me less scared of it, if you know what I mean, I was a little, I was, I was no longer scared of those numbers on the page. But after that, I was taken out of the class and put into the dunces class, which they didn't officially call it the dunces class, but everyone else did. And I was in there with a lot of the kids who were either uncontrollable or I suppose would be classed as antisocial, maybe now, back then, maybe they now would just be special needs, which having special needs that is not a negative thing just sometimes just a little bit of help to get you back get get to where you need to be maybe you know but I was if I'd have been born if I'd have been at high school now I'd have been in a, I'd have been under the special needs based on how I was when I was a kid and I suppose I knew that I knew what was going on. I was aware that I I wasn't at the same level as the other kids. Um, and also because I was the youngest, I wasn't even physically or mentally really up up to date with them, because some of them were like a year, nearly a year older than me. So they had a year's extra growth, a year's extra experience. Their brain was a year more advanced than mine was. So, yeah, it's, it was weird. But what it did do is it gave me an opportunity to meet and make friends with people that I might not have made friends with. And so I had friends, because we were just basically left in this big classroom on our own to do whatever we wanted for a couple of hours. And it was like once or twice a week. That was it. It just like there was there didn't seem any any reason or any point to it. And eventually, I think the the teachers sussed that out because we were enjoying ourselves in there because there was games and we we used to get married and stuff. And I think in the second year they brought us back into normal classes and just made us sit in the class. And if we didn't do anything, they just left us alone. And 
those that were disruptive would be put in detention or just get away with it, be ignored. I was more the ignored disruptor. So I was, I used to be disruptive in maths because a different teacher and we didn't get on. Me and her were not best friends. And so, yeah, we used to, I used to be disruptive in that lesson. English, I can't hardly even remember English after the first year. First year, yeah, because the first year was when I was actually excited about going to high school. I was going to make a go of it. I was going to, I thought, yeah, I'm going to, this is going to be good. I didn't know that it was nothing like being in junior school. It was like, no, it was just, yeah, completely different. But I went with optimism, with an open mind. I genuinely, you know, thought it was going to be a lot of fun. So I got there. And my home teacher, we, we all had like a homeroom. So mine and my my teacher for the year or my, you know, whatever for my group are for that year was also my English teacher so that's the room we used to be in like before lunch, after lunch you know at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day and he had glasses and the the room basically led to the library the back of it went to the library and there was also like a a room in the library where the teachers, the two English teachers, had. Was it two? There might be. I think there was two. Oh, the lady next door. Oh, I was in love with her. Anyway, so I had this teacher, and he. I think he. I don't know what happened, but I said to him, "No, he gave me some homework." He didn't do that. He didn't go... Because that would have been weird. That's me doing that. I don't know why that happened. I could have just edited it out, but nope. So yeah, I... I did... Yeah, got some homework. It's basically just... Started reading this book and the homework was to go home. Because that's... You have to be there to do the work. Because that's... You know, homework and she, he said just write what you think is going to happen next now there cannot be a right or wrong answer to that can there I mean if, if I'd have come back and I'd written um, a poem about a snail racing against a poo a bit of poo then yeah that would like that's not relevant but no I actually did say what <laughs> I did say what I thought was going to happen next. It didn't quite fit into his uh, idea of what might happen next, and it definitely didn't happen next in the book. But he didn't give us the book to take home. We just read the first chapter, and then what do you think is going to happen next? And. Um, so I handed it in, the homework. I wish I still had it so I could read it to you. It basically, he said, I get, I got really, really low marks. Now I spent hours, I spent minutes, no, I spent hours writing this homework, really enthused. I, I even didn't watch TV that night. I was so excited about doing this story and handed it in and he handed it back and it was really low marks and basically just said it was awful and ever since then 
at school, I, that was kind of my crumbling point. That was like, uh Because English was the only subject that I liked. Going into high school, that was the only subject that I enjoyed. Like reading was the only thing. So yeah, that was weird. And he, I actually asked him one day, why don't you like me? And he just looked at me. He just carried on eating, eating his kebab. I mean, maybe he didn't like the idea that I was disturbing his Saturday night out. You know, but it's still just why just I did that. I said that to on a, another kid once. I said, "Do you like me?" I don't know why I was asking people that. I mean, I'm I was like four, thirteen probably at the time, twelve, thirteen. And he said, do you just say, do I love you? I said, no, I didn't say that. Do you love me? He said, you said it again. I said, no, I didn't. I said, do you like me? He said, no, you said, do you love me twice? Then you said, do you like me? I said, no. So just said, do you love me? He said, you said it again. No, I didn't. I didn't say it again. But yeah, he didn't love me. He's, well, why would I ask people if they liked me? I'll tell you why, because I didn't know. I didn't know. I've never known, and I don't know now. I still don't know. I don't know if anyone likes me. I don't know. Well, you can tell if they want to spend time with you. No. I genuinely don't know. I have no concept. This the whole thing is like, oh, you can... You know how many people seem to be able to to uh, mind read oh I know what you're thinking like but I don't really and the idea of empathy like oh you can you can sort of almost let you know what someone's feeling like no I don't I don't know what anyone's feeling and you know what I think that's the reason I was quite a good counsellor because instead of sitting there thinking that I know what they're feeling and nodding my head and all that stuff, being compassionate, which is a really good thing to do, obviously, if you're a counsellor, I would ask the person how they're feeling. And I'll try to understand it in a... try to comprehend what they were saying instead of just assuming and sometimes that breaking down of what they're thinking and it them getting explaining it to me because I noticed that a lot of communication sometimes is there's missing stuff it's almost like well you know what I mean no I don't sometimes I just don't say anything and I just accept it is it the same way as if someone uses a word that I don't understand I just like carry on like nothing has happened you know I mean sometimes I will ask what the word means or what do you mean by that word <laughs> what do you when you use that word in what context do you are you providing it to me during this particular conversation yeah, I don't know people like me. I think I'm more on the verge of assuming that they dislike me, I think. I can't tell. Just can't. I'm not sure. I mean, people will be friendly, but that just means they're being friendly. It's really just, I guess, take people for face value. And it is what it is in the moment, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, don't know, I don't know. I mean, I used to do, I, I went through this period, went through this period when I was testing myself online. Uh, I'm talking 20 years ago. So, and since then as well. But I started thinking, and I started reading books and like, what is going on with me? What is it? 
I mean, some of you might be thinking, yeah, what is going on with you? Why have you not talked about Wellington Boots? That's what this was supposed to be about. You're, you're ruining the recording by talking about your life. We want to hear about the Wellington Boots. We want to hear about that rubber. We want to... <laughs> uh, blind. I... I'm sure I had a pair of yellow, yellow Wellington boots once. Blue, black, red, even green maybe. I'm sure I had some fluorescent uh, Wellington boots once as well. So I've had a few different pairs. I didn't like it when they were too big, but I didn't like it when they were too small either. You know when your toes are really cramped, it's like, no, this isn't fun. But then... When they're too big, you literally you 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 lift your leg, and then it's like three seconds later, the actual bottom of the Wellington boot lifts off the floor because that's there's that much room inside for your foot. But so I I start thinking, you know, what am I? What am I? What's going on? So I, I can't read people. I don't know what people are thinking. I have a genuine... Like, I'm not interested quite often in people. Uh, and I like a little bit of juicy bit of gossip now and then. And if someone tells me that they're in trouble, yeah, I care. But it's not because I'm interested. It's because I care about the person and I want to help. But I don't. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. I could like. I can't work it out myself. I, I'd always wanted to be one of those like really compassionate people that was always interested in other people, interested in what they got to say, interested in their lives. And most of the time, I'm not. Sometimes I am. If someone says something that interests me, that's when I ask follow-up questions. The rest of the time is just small talk, which I will try and stick to the weather. You know, once uh, when I was work, I was at the comedy club, and it was an after party. Just the staff, and I was just—I think I must have drunk a little bit too much. And the manager the next day said, or the next week, said, uh, I think you need to get some counselling. I said, why? He said, some of the stuff you come out with when you're drunk. I said, what do you mean? You mean I'm aggressive? He said, no, you're not aggressive. It's just, you talk about really serious things. And we're just trying to have fun. Well, excuse me. I mean... I guess I used to be a bit deep. I used to go a little bit deep and talk about feelings and talk about things and they didn't they didn't want that. But at the same time I can do silly, I can do pointless, I can do I mean some would argue that small talk is all I do when I make these recordings potentially I suppose. But I just yeah, I don't know. I did end up getting counselling. I did have counselling previous anyway. I think. Yeah, I had. And then I had loads afterwards as well. But... That... The idea of helping people without being interested in them is a concept that seems very difficult for some people. The idea is I will help someone, but I don't want to know all about their life. I don't need to know that. It's not that I don't... It's not that I'm not interested... Well, it is. But it's... The thing is, it's not that I'm not interested as in I don't care. That's the difference. It's not I don't care. It's just I'm not naturally interested. I'm only interested in things that I'm naturally interested in. And that varies. Depending on the situation. Depending on the day. Depending on whatever but it doesn't mean I don't care you know I care a 
about my dad's health. I care about, but I I'm not interested in pretty much any part of his life. Um, although he's got lovely hair, lovely beard. But you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm interested in his life where it involves me. However weird that might sound, and it's, I guess, maybe sounds very selfish and whatever, but I'm interested in what he was like before I was born. I'm interested in what he was like when I was a baby, what he was like when I was a kid, you know, that, that time. That's what interests me about him. What he's doing now, all I just want to make, I'm just, as long as he's happy, as long as he's healthy, as long as he's well, and I'm not, I have no interest really. And I know that he's got no interest in what I do either. He, well, I don't know, but I imagine. He's, he's just, you know, we meet up and there's nothing to talk about. It's just, it's like, okay. And I'll just say what's going on. They'll say what's going on. And it's just, there's just, you know, talk about garden gardening and stuff like that which I've got no interest in in at all um, so that that being interested in someone else I guess it is it's not not being interested in the person just not being interested in their interests which is why I do these boring objects because I sometimes or I do the yeah do the I talk about things in the let me bore you to sleep about things that are interesting to me but I know that to a lot of other people it will be very uninteresting because other people's interests I find not particularly stimulating or interesting and I can't you know I know that there's a lot of people that, that I know a lot because I, I read it online and people told me not everybody loves boxing I love it. I can't even tell you why I love it. I just do. But a lot of people really don't. But then... Billions of people love cricket and football. Soccer, football, you know, like English football. Billions around the world. Billions love cricket. And I, I'm, I don't really like either of those. I don't understand. I, don't, I definitely don't understand the cricket one. Apart from it can be quite relaxing to be there. If it's a nice day and you've, it's, you see, it's, it could be quite relaxing as long as you can get to the access to the toilet. And football, I can see the skill. I, you know, it's, it's obviously hugely skillful players. I can do stuff that I could never do in a million years. It's like, I just don't have that, um, yeah, I don't have that kind of coordination or, plus I wasn't interested in it anyway to, to play. I didn't like playing it. I was always picked last. In fact, it was really between me and my friend. We'd get both get picked last. So it was either me or him. And whoever it was would tea whoever got picked last would get teased by the other one. So if he got picked last, I would tease him for the rest of the day. You got picked last. And he'd do the same to me. But basically we were just we didn't do anything. We stood at one of the ball one of the the net things, you know, where they keep the ball in. Um and we used to spin around like Wonder Woman until we got dizzy and just fall over. That was what we did during football time. Uh, so I think that made me a little bit unpopular sometimes because if, you, if you're not a team player and football is definitely a team game, isn't it? It's something that needs teams. Everyone kind of at least giving it a go. I didn't even attempt it really. Um Although I did quite well once, yeah, once I did well in the second half. 
but it's just I didn't realise that when you got into the second half the goal changes the other side so I scored a couple of goals <laughs> uh, home goals and couldn't figure out why why, every, why no one in my team was actually uh, cheering in fact I didn't know who was in my team I was like cheering with the people and they're like that's not your team I said but everyone's just dressed in their normal stuff how do you know who's who that was my argument so so that was something that used to question why am I why am I not why do, why do I need why do I need to be away from people How? why is that my recuperation why do why do sometimes I get so drained when I'm around people when I'm around groups even I never could understand it because I get on so well with, that's the thing I do actually get on really well with most people that I meet but my my tolerance for human interaction let's say is very limited it's not that I dislike someone I don't mean tolerance like that I mean just it it gets a little bit too much and I have to get away and once I get away I feel better but I enjoy part of it it's, it's a strange one that's why I was always hoping I'd meet somebody like a female and that would be the tester if I met her and I liked being with her and I didn't want to get away from her that was always a good tester that there was a chance of something you know lasting and oh, that's just my, my my jumper can't be good Ooh, I'm getting hot not excited and um, I think I'm trying to think what girlfriends I've had that I felt really comfortable with not no 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 probably I had probably two that I would say that I was quite relaxed with one in 91 very relaxed with her but she was almost slow motion and I wasn't I wasn't the slow person I am today I was a little bit uh I was like 20 and a bit wired you know a little bit ooh, a little bit I don't know not quite as I am these days and she was very slow like the way she talked the way when she walked and like she said like oh dear son let's go to the cinema because she was from uh, Wales and she she was so relaxed and I, I noticed that I felt calmer when I was with her just felt calmer and the other one although she I mean, went to the cinema and she just, uh, went to a toilet <laughs> she went to a toilet honestly she was in there till like halfway through the movie like what were you doing in there I mean, did you have an operation and then heal from the operation? I mean, what were you doing? Writing a book? I mean, blimey. But yeah, so she's she was never in a hurry. Which I thought was... It was a little bit... It was calming. But difficult at times as well. But I, f I felt quite relaxed with her never really got an opportunity to spend time with her properly I had lots of dates but never never spent any time at home my home or her home so that wasn't really 
Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. How do we manage to get... Yeah, I think she... she we were dating for a while. It wasn't a long time and she moved. And I used to visit her where she lived. Because she was, became a student nurse. That was about 50 years ago, blimey. There was another one, like 2005, I met someone that I got on really well with. That was relaxed. And, I mean, I, I think, yeah, we got on really well. The only thing that used to, I'd be watching TV and it threw me off a little bit is because she, uh, she get wanted, she get wanted to do uh, close up magic and I was like I'm trying to watch EastEnders and she's like which which hand have I got a coin in like pick a card pick a card no I'm trying to watch TV Coronation Street's on in a minute and she'd like pull out a rabbit from her hat it's like oh. but other than that we got <laughs> really well trying to think of any others there was one girl one a lady I say girl female that I met and I still don't know why nothing happened because we were quite compatible as people I mean nothing happened like with us physically but we met she was she was basically the sister of of my girl my friend's girlfriend's best friend sister does that make sense so my my best friend's girlfriend her best friend used to come around his flat and I always kind of fancied her but not her attitude she had a real she was one of these where if, if this happened this is what I would do if I was that person, I'd do this. And that was constantly. Like, I would do this in that situation. Like, you don't know what you would do. If it's never happened before, I would do, like, yeah, of course you'd do that. You do. So he used to wind me up a little bit. Anyway, but I did fancy her. But the thing is, she was, she had a few men on the go. So I just thought, oh, no. Well, actually, she wasn't interested in me. That's the fact. But she she did have more than one boyfriend. Um, she even talked about it. So, uh, so anyway, we went out to the pub. I can't remember what it was for, but we went along. I went along because my friend was going, his girlfriend was there, and, and this woman comes up to me and starts talking to me, and we get on really really well. We're having a couple of drinks, and uh, it turns out that she's her sister, the the one that's always talking about what she would do in a any given situation. And we held hands as we walked home. She took me back to her place. We sat on the settee, and we was just just chilling out. And then her sister came in because they all like walked back but they I don't know how she got home but I we, we just walked it wasn't a long long distance she came back and said oh I'm going to bed I got up and said and I thought oh no that wasn't a, it wasn't an offer so I stayed sat down with her sister I said uh, so I'll see her I said okay and then I, I'm sort of with with her sister I can't remember what her name was I'm not sure if I learnt her name and we probably together for about half hour maybe a little bit longer just chatting her her parents owned a a booking and like a what do you call it bookies like betting shop empire or something and the the same as 
I think uh, my girlfriend, my, my friend's girlfriend, her her parents also did as well. So they they were quite wealthy. But I don't. I just I liked her, but I just didn't know. I don't know. It was just it was weird because I got a phone call from my friend. They were downstairs in the car coming to pick me up. And I said, oh, I'll be down in a sec. And sort of see you. I said goodbye to her. I never saw her again. I actually really liked her. What was going on? What was that about? I don't know. And I felt comfortable with her, but I just didn't... I, I don't know, honestly. One of those weird moments that... Huh. I couldn't read her either. I think sometimes I need to be told. I might not believe it, but at least if I've heard it, I can at least sort of go from there. But I didn't know if she... I didn't know what, what, what she'd invite me back for, if she wanted to sort of maybe start some kind of relationship with me. I don't know. I don't know. Cook me a meal, make me a cup of tea. Didn't even make me a cup of tea. I was furious. <laughs> no, I wasn't at all. She was nicer. I liked her, but I didn't didn't even ask for a number. Didn't uh, nothing. I just said, oh, "Off now, see ya." Why? It's weird. Very strange. So, and I was like, 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 part of the reason why I was kind of like doing these online tests because I wanted like, no, why, why do I need, why do I go from being super uh, social to completely antisocial? And by antisocial, I don't mean antisocial behaviour, but just wanting to keep away from people. Because at school, I used to be. I remember, one, I remember one period when I was literally hiding from everyone during lunch, so I could. And I was reading these Star Trek books, and it was they were based on the original series, and I was getting through them. I mean, I was literally, I had loads of them, and I kept reading them, and that's what I did during my break times because I could not face spending time with anyone and I was probably about 13 at the time maybe 14 probably 13 actually thinking about it because when I was 14 once once I discovered karate that was that was it I was that kind of became my my focus that was my main focus in life. So yeah, that was quite a big thing for a while. The old uh, karate. But it's just, I just remember even sitting, because we had this... I don't know what it was. It was it, There was the back entrance to the room to the classroom and the front entrance and I, I basically sat in the back no one went into the back entrance it was more like a fire escape I guess and I used to go up there and sit outside and read and people would find me you know it's like can you not see I'm reading and like they'd find me like what are you doing there like reading why Cause I like reading. What are you reading that for? I'm like, well, oh. and I just—it's it's never quite understood what it was, but I needed to be away from people. It's weird. And then other times, I needed to be with people, and I'd be you know, super excited about stuff and weird. Well, it's not really now, but it seemed weird at the time. Didn't really get it. 
Plus, I used to be a werewolf as well. Did I tell you that? <laughs> I used to think I was a werewolf. So I did. I've talked about my delusional childhood, and I think some people. Well, I've got a lot, a lot of ideas about what people might think, haven't I? Today, some people listen to me talking about rolling around on the floor, turning into a werewolf. But I think I was joking. I mean, I, of course, I didn't turn into a werewolf, but I did think I was. I genuinely believed I was turning into a werewolf. And, you know, I was 13 at the time. 12, 12 maybe. So, yeah, I had these... I used to think I could control the weather. I used to think I could turn myself invisible. Who'd have thought that one day I actually could be invisible, which I am now. Especially to women. <laughs> I am invisible, baby. I should think I could read minds. Even at the age of 15, I remember, yeah, looking at a baby. It's in the... My stomach's gurgling. I need to eat. Looking at this little baby in a pram. And... My stepmom was talking to someone, and I just was looking at this baby's eyes, and I was talking to the baby, like in my mind. And I thought I could control dogs, stop a dog from barking by just telling it in my mind to stop. I found out recently that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Not with this one. But yeah, I used to believe that stuff. I used to really, like, believe it, believe it, not just as a joke. Yeah. I used to think I could make it rain. Like, I could look at the sky and actually... I would spend time choosing the weather I wanted and commanding the weather to become how I wanted it to be ironic is I always wanted it to be raining when it was really cloudy when it was more chance of raining you know I never gave myself a harder task like in the middle of summer make it snow make it snow I like, never did that I didn't, didn't want to really put myself through too much of a challenge you know stick to the easy ones you know if it's it, it's forecast rain. Everyone's walking around with their brollies. I'm going to look at the sky and make it rain. I'm going to prove to myself I have that power. <laughs> Bless my little childish little brain. The childish brain I had then, not the childish brain I have now. You're such a baby. And I didn't even talk about Wellington boots, did I? What's going on? Why didn't I talk about Wellington Boots? I guess because I ended up talking about something else. I mean, technically, I have come back to it, but does is does this does this count? Does it count or not? I don't know. What do you think? Should I still call it Wellington Boots? Maybe I'll call it Wellington Boots ish. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, what I did, yeah, 2004, I started looking into... In them days, it was called Asperger's or Asperger's. I think in, a, in America, I think it was Asperger's, but here it was Asperger's. Or the other way around, I'm not sure. And... The there is a, an easier way to remember the the name if it's new to you, but it's not nice really. But then it's not used anymore. It's now on the autistic spectrum. And I studied the subject because the one thing because I was having all these anxiety stuff going on and I was trying to figure out what was what was happening. 
the one constant thing that I've had in my lifetime is becoming obsessed with something like a hobby. I mean, obsessed completely above everything else in the whole world. So it happened when I was a kid, it's happened as an adult multiple times. I mean, this is the first time it's lasted really for any like really length of time because, but I became obsessed with vampires and the occult for quite a while when I was a kid. I was in the library studying the history of all these different things, you know, just, um, I think that was during my werewolf period, probably. It makes sense, I guess. And I became obsessed with karate. I became obsessed with what obsessions have I had over the years? Oh, blimey, building websites. That was a huge one. I spent a year and a half nearly doing that. Completely obsessed with that. Became obsessed with hypnosis. <sighs> trying to think. Just different things. Obsessed with... What other things other than comedy, I guess, obsessed with comedy, just in like, it's like my whole life, it becomes my whole life, and since 2006, this has kind of been what I've been doing, these online recordings, videos, whatever I do, that's been my life, and it's become my life. So it doesn't feel so obsessed as is just, this is like breathing to me now. But I find myself moving a little bit towards the psychology, a little bit towards, am I going to get obsessed with the university course? Which, it's not a bad thing, to be honest. It just means I'll learn more. I'll have a deeper knowledge of the subject, deeper and broader. I will want to study, I want to learn. And my stomach will want to gurgle because I need to eat. So that's, I'm going to go, I need to eat some food. But yeah, the boxing's on. I don't know what time boxing starts. I don't know what time I started this recording. I don't even really have no idea. But I'm going to go and get something to eat because my tummy is telling me, feed me. So thank you for listening to this boring objects-ish Wednesday. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I might just call it this was supposed to be a boring objects. I might do that and then on th on Monday because this is Saturday now on Monday I will do a proper boring objects Monday boring objects I semi promise I have a semi promise that I'm presenting to you I probably will yeah I'm going to attempt to I intend to so thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself and be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy lots of love bye Relax in a more deep and meaningful way. 
maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, 
Now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but Maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand, perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands. I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it 
comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I've noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever 
whenever I imagine my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed. tend to visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has 
has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper, and deeper. in the feelings in the back of your neck the 
the feelings in your wrists. muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower. Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel.
your spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back. Letting go. Really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy.
to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more. Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Total peace, Go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling of positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave of 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment, this is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth. Relaxing, calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. Focus in. the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck, relaxed and loose. Focus in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, you don't even know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And that feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing. 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So Now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
tips. Attention to the front of your body. Muscles in your thighs, your knees. and your shins completely
so peaceful. So calm. Letting go of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now from twenty down to one. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. The further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
obtain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Seven. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles 
muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, you're going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
You're counting down from ten to one. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening, the 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Now, ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, 
the shins and the calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important you know anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yeah, it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. There's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was like, okay. If I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs, shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles. And your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realise. That now that I've mentioned your feet. You're probably. Focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine the fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, and massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet also go whew, my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk about, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. to one and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed ten nine eight seven So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music of course you're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people of course you might be but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own so no distractions And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises, a sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical. This is just a natural process. Something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep. Depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy process of gradually relaxing 
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may note 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. in with number seven.
as you now notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. that your mind is starting to drift just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands Eight 
starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. 
we take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, we're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if we've gone inside yourself and we've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to Please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And it's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you you're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
permission to let go because that's all it is, is just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now. as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness. It just feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone.
to and that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. Spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. It doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here doesn't belong here negativity has no place in your life which makes room for more comfort more healing more relaxation, more peace. It feels nice, doesn't it? To just down to one, you can continue to relax, if you choose you can drift to sleep, with every number you hear me say, twice as relaxed, or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy, now, twenty, Eight. 
15. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax it's kind of expected you expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. And even though you've not really started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body. Pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. And in your brain is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort and relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start to drift That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by 
hitting that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. You get your alert again to my voice focusing on body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone, and the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift.
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers, maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now they almost seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
Letting go of everything. Everything. I'm going to start now. And I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy, and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just Holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently... Let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can 
feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. With both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust To feel peaceful and calm. And as I massage the sides of your neck gently, moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck and I'm massaging the, the back of your neck Especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders and the neck and again that can hold tension and stress and when massaged sometimes a nice deep massage is useful and you decide how deep that massage is Just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. Just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And you can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you that way it'll still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we were the BFB, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. And eventually you get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, the two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I will pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same. This time, starting 
here, the upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue up the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. And working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, your fingers digging deep. back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but 
Termina Solidan Tiku Listen now the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet the sides your arches your heel put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually Moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I'd spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently moving down your ankle into your feet massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience for having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. Just 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone, and you're just massaging the whole of the chest. chest around, it gives us quite a large area, as you can move from one side to the next, moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So you're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. It feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your 
पहली बात से to the other side again and repeat that process of relaxing deeply calmly you feel loose you feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach the front of your stomach circles around your belly button and then going the other way around there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. down to your knees, gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy. and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin and you can just lie there for as long as you choose enjoying feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. to one, and each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. not a big blow, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number, as we move down, and you can just blow that one out. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel sounds where you are, you'd be aware of those sounds at the moment, but you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's once the pigeon, right 
likes to say hello sometimes. And as your plane goes by, it be traffic and trains in the distance. seems important whatsoever the more candles you blow out the less important anything is the more candles you blow out say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. The first candle, which is one hundred. a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Eight. 
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax. body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Oh, yeah, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two and it feels blissful and just by sitting now like that your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind will prepare to let go of everything and to just completely allow all the stress of your body to evaporate and any tense
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and then see more and more of stalian. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realise you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice. 
breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are come to a standstill and maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know where the feeling is completely calm, loose and positive benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your head is relaxing. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain to the rest of your body and your mind to relax even more deeply relax even more completely go of any remaining thoughts or concerns allowing them to just drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in this moment in this moment of deep relaxation
this ever increasing sensation of relief, comfort, that has spread in throughout your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension but just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, 
sensitivity and touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, open and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, and moving your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. And I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. Just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation. of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, 
towards everything. It has to be very, very gentle. Just so you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your eyes, the part of your biceps side, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and they might just tense them, but very, very gently, and slowly, so you're not putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can feel more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently, and slowly tighten the muscles in your neck bone. Notice. Just above your forehead. As we are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so you can get more in tune with how
it up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. sensations that you have been experiencing in your wrists, perhaps you bring your hands up and down, again include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. And if those muscles also move into your hip area and then into your buttocks, the sides of your hips. physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. It's enough 
everything starts to slow down. including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movement of energy make up the larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way or I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you the feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearms and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them it's kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling it's almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing Forcing on. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. in the difference in each shoulder your lower back side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, just stretched a little bit even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along that feel in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And the 
so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. And of course if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different or might not that different these days but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest but at the side and underneath pretty much the same whether you're a man or a woman there's muscles there muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be in case you know I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels. It feels okay. A little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. That's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back feels quite nice actually the good thing about this is you can if you want to you can just flex various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing and you do tense a muscle and then you let it go it relaxes way more than it would normally. You don't have to feel that you're unable to do that. There's no point in doing it. 
facing uh, your shoes the upper part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peaceful is your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. You're just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, so your body. body, maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom, when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from the body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, when get us our little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship.
listening and embrace because your mind started to imagine something different and being started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state. Your own name, your own 
physical sensation. Most likely it's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all the annoying feelings that you don't like. Sucking it out through your skull. full of fresh air, a place where you can stretch, it's almost as if if you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. sensation that you'd like to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. This is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count.
Sim.
sin and physical sin that I have now apparently to hide and I am worse intention to leave than to undertake the sin of the past and if I focus on the fingertips maybe they feel a little bit stronger because that's what I understand them to see them potentially becoming exiting the body through the fingertips so now I'm going to plant my feet again upon the ground this time stress and the anxiety that you may have leading to yourself just leading to yourself it's almost as if it's just releasing to hold your stomach and enable the just the body to stick along comfortably surrounded in a body that allows the whole arm to just feel tension as your body whatever's left just releases from that around you and you may notice that you start to become more relaxed as that arm is pointing just do a little scan of your body noticing your body parts noticing how your upper body how it shapes and spins from the outside how you feel just noticing sense of tiredness 
still there is that you might be kind of nice to have with your armor and your sword tips too. Just focus on the armor. This is that CA we were talking about where it makes distinction of strengths from your might. Your armor and your mind and any tension that you might have within you that affects
Happy to make it warm for the day for the night. I want to explore this weather. What it feels like when you feel the sun is in one's eyes. I'm not forcing myself, but giving myself it is a command really isn't it when you're telling yourself that you just feel this little bit firm that only you can really tell yourself that you feel that way it's like when you're telling yourself to like relax 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 calm and once you've done so it becomes someone else can't really help the same Test it out. There's no little tests. You do little tests along the way. And you can get more of an idea than thought. I just had thought I couldn't really um, work with the sense of comfort of being in the same place as my body and my mind. And that took me start by just just focusing your heart just lift your heart and just tell your heart to relax and just say relax as you focus on your breath you could say my hands are relaxed my body is relaxed and I think if you actually do it directly Focusing and imagining that your hands are the floor of the bed or whatever it is. So talking to your heart and just saying, relax. Focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. And just saying the same words, relax. Now find the right tone for relax. I mean, I might say relax. And you, you might say relax. Or relax. You know, you, you might say it differently. Focusing on your eyes while you're looking up at the eyes or while you're looking out your eyes. And just tell your eyes to relax. Relax. Relax.
start focusing on this and actually you know with a a bit of work and put a bit of effort you know put a bit of thought into your practice and grow in that area you know this can so if you have got that in mind and it's going to become a daily way of a practice that you're going to do then you know that is that is the focus for you Thank you. 